In the past, indeed on this very channel, we've talked about comparisons between the Tesla Model 3 electric car and the Ford Model T. And while we've acknowledged that both cars deserve their own place in history, we've stopped short of calling the Tesla Model 3, or in fact any Tesla, the Model T Ford of electric cars. If you're interested in the reasons why, I've linked to a video I made about a year ago on the subject in the description below. But if the Tesla Model 3 isn't the Model T of electric cars, is there a car that currently could earn that title? And if not, what would such a vehicle look like? In my opinion, any electric vehicle that seeks to make as big an impact on the world as the Model T would need to satisfy several key points affordability, versatility, reliability, repairability, and ease of use. First, it would need to be relatively cheap to buy. I'm talking under 28,000 US dollars, which is about the adjusted price for a Model T in today's money. Importantly too, since there were no incentives I'm aware of for a tin Lizzie that mirror today's electric vehicle incentives, that price would need to be without any incentives. Currently, there's not a single electric car out there that reaches that kind of price point, which, if we're using very simple logic, would mean there's no Model T of electric cars out there yet. But hang on a second. While the Model T would cost around $28,000 in today's money, the price of new cars today is far higher than it was when the Model T was rolling off Mr. Ford's production lines. Indeed, in January 2018, the average new price of a car in the US was $36,270, and the average price of a new electric car before incentives was $38,775. So if we look at average prices, it could be argued that there are already electric cars out there that are well within the average new car price bracket. However, in order to be a true Model T moment, I believe we need to see an electric car that comes in at a compact average car prices, that's under $21,000, before it has the same kind of transitional force to get people off gasoline and onto electricity as a Model T did by getting people off horse, foot and bicycles into cars. And of course, the easiest way to get the price down is to make large volumes, large volumes that exceed anything that any automaker, including Tesla, is managing today. With price out of the way, it's time to talk about versatility. The Model T was extremely versatile, both in terms of the number of variants it spawned during its production, but also in terms of its capabilities on and off-road. In today's modern world, we perhaps don't need quite the off-road capabilities of those early Model Ts, thanks to the wonders of tarmac. But any Model T of the electric car world would need to offer a variety of different body styles or models to cater for everyone's tastes and needs. Without a wide-ranging appeal, it simply wouldn't attract the imagination of the mass public. And that, of course, includes having a range in excess of 200 miles per charge or, as I'll explain a little later, really good charging versatility. Next, let's talk reliability and repairability. I'm going to put both of these two together since it's no good to having a generally reliable car if it takes forever to repair or if those repairs are costly and difficult. This is because in order for an electric car truly to have a Model T moment, it needs to have a low downtime when things go wrong. Otherwise, anyone who owns one is going to need to have a second car or an alternative form of transport. And in order to make an impact across as wide a demographic as possible, those repairs need to be as affordable as possible. One way of achieving this, of course, comes from the economies of scale. The more of something you build, the more affordable it becomes. But it also comes from how easy it is to repair. Now, of course, in the days of the Model T, many repairs were undertaken by the owner themselves, or at least they could be. But given that the overwhelming majority of car buyers today do not carry out their own repairs on their vehicles, and DIY car stuff is generally considered the preserve of enthusiasts with time to spare, I'm not going to require that particular characteristic. Instead, any car that is a Model T of electric cars will need to be so simple in its repairability that it can be taken to any EV certified garage and dealership and worked on with minimal specialist equipment. And by that, I mean make and model specific tools that are either expensive to buy or which require a huge amount of training to use training beyond the basic electric and hybrid electric certification process that an increasingly larger number of independent dealerships and garages are obtaining in order to work on low and zero emission vehicles. The same is true for exotic construction materials. So cars like the BMW i3 with carbon fiber composite material are out of the running here because body repair is considered a specialist job. 
But finally, I'd suggest that any electric vehicle worthy of the title of the Model T of electric cars would need to be agnostic in terms of charging capabilities. That might mean, for example, that it could not only charge at home using a domestic charging station, but also make use of multiple DC quick charging standards at a variety of charging speeds. At the moment, the only vehicle I can think of which even offers multiple DC quick charging standards without adapters is the new electric London taxi being produced in the UK. But if we're to make a Model T of electric cars, I think we need to make use of as many different charging networks as possible. So that means we need to have a car that is agnostic to charging standards, right? If you look at my list above, I can't think of a single vehicle that gets anywhere near this yet, but maybe I've got it wrong or I've missed something out. If you think I have, let me know in the comments below. That's it. Thanks for joining me. See you next time.